Hey guys, Mrs. Gatch here. I'm gonna go ahead and give you a quick tutorial over the things that you can do with the camera application on either your iPad that we'll be using in class or your iPhone if you have one at home. So let's go ahead and begin. Okay guys, let's go ahead and get started with the uh, camera app here. So to start out, there's not a lot of buttons or functions that you can do with the camera app, which I actually think makes it better and a lot simpler to use. So let's go over just probably the three or four that I think are the most useful. To start out with, um, over here on your left, you're going to see that there is an option for zoom, which the zoom is decent. It's good if you need to get in a little bit close, but I've seen kids do this a lot where they'll see something far away and then they'll just zoom all the way in and they're like, yes, that's what I want. And obvious here, what happens is you get a really grainy picture. It's a lot of noise. That's what we call it when in the photography world. So my best advice to you guys is when you're using the zoom, make sure it's absolutely necessary. And second, sometimes it's just much better to move up to your object rather than zoom in. Don't you think so? This monkey guy does. So that's the first thing. So you have over here your zoom in, zoom out on the left. And then on the right, there's a lots of different buttons. The ones that you're mostly going to focus on, you're either going to be taking a picture in this photo option. And at the bottom um, right hand, you could also pick a square. We're not going to be doing the panorama one very much. I, you can't really print them. I don't think they turn out super well. So either you stick with square or you stick with the photo option. One thing that I think a lot of people um, miss out with the power of the iPad or the iPhone is if you notice around when you're constantly moving your camera, you see how there's that little yellow box in the middle. It will start to, what it's doing, it's automatically focusing and adjusting the exposure, which is how clear our picture will come up. But sometimes I've noticed that if you don't lock it, it can really mess up what's in focus in your picture. Your camera's always going to go for either the thing in the middle or what um, is moving. So there is an option that you can have. I, if you press on a certain part in your picture and hold it long enough, that AEAF lock will pop up. And that means automatic exposure, automatic focus lock. But if you move it around, it'll you can change it to whoever you want. So let's say if I wanted to focus on this little guy first, I could. Or let's say I wanted to focus on this guy back here, I could. And what's really cool too that I think people miss out on is once you've selected where you want to focus, once the AE a off lock is on, you can actually move your finger up and down and it will adjust the brightness of the picture, which I think is actually pretty cool for taking a really clear shot. You don't want to overexpose because it gets washed out or make it too dark because then it's just like, actually looks kind of scary personally. It's maybe good if you're filming a creepy movie. So we're just going to put it right here and then you can just turn. Now, once you, another thing here that I think people don't realize about the shutter button is something that's called burst mode. And burst mode is excellent for action shots. So all you do is you just start, let's say I wanted to catch some movement. I'll just hold down it and move my camera around. And it took 19 pictures. To check those out, I can click on the photo button, but then I have to go to all photos. And you open this up here and you'll see it was a burst and you have to hit select. And then now it'll let you see which one you would want. Obviously these all are really crappy, but if you're ever capturing movement, then you can really pick the one photo that you want. So that's how that burst mode option works. Um, and then finally, another really cool trick is here, this little self timer one. So you can turn it on and what that does, it's really good just for giving you an option if you had to take a picture of yourself or prep someone for something and then it'll literally do a little countdown there at the um, lower right hand corner. So um, finally, I really wouldn't suggest you guys turning the camera around and taking a picture because the camera in the front is not as high quality as the camera in the back of the camera, uh, of the iPad or the iPhone. So that's my quick little spiel about the awesome camera app, and I can't wait to see what pictures you guys take with your iPads in class.